So listen, it would be very easy for me to use the subject of banning board games as another way to dunk on Monopoly, but you know what? That sounds great. Monopoly is to board gaming what those epic movie, date movie, meet the Spartan bastards were to the film industry. As dated as they were inexplicably successful, eight hours long no matter how long they were. If you said you hated them, some people incorrectly called you elitist. And if that was the only example of the medium you'd ever experienced, you'd be right to say, yeah, let's only do that once a f***. Year at best. Ah, I feel better now. And if that bothers you enough to leave a comment saying how much you like Monopoly, just know that I own the most valuable property of all under your skin. So yeah, Monopoly is banned from my gaming table. Most gamers have games they refuse to play, but sometimes it goes a little further than that. Sometimes a game commits a boo-boo so heinous it goes directly to jail without passing go. I'm Adam from No Rolls Bard, and here are 10 controversial board games that got banned. Also, if you like this video, please give us a subscribe. Some people watch our videos without subscribing. We appreciate that, but it also helps us get ad revenue so we could make more so subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Number 10. What shall I be? The exciting game of career girls coming in hot. This game was made in the past. Things were bad then. Things are bad now. Absolutely. But at least parents aren't buying this patronizing piece of shit for their daughters. <laughs> It was made in the 60s by the same company that made Scrabble and saw the players competing to collect skills, avoid bad traits, all in a race to be the first to become a career girl. There were six careers you could be model, actress, air hostess, teacher, nurse and ballet dancer. Those are all worthy careers of course but eyebrows then start to raise when you consider they also made an exciting career game for boys which let them choose from statesman, doctor, athlete, engineer, scientist or astronaut. Sorry girls, no space for you, the closest you'll get is air hostess, but not if you get the overweight token, oof. After increasing pressure from people who thought this was bullshit, the first edition of Exciting Game for Career Girls was pulled from the shelves and eventually replaced with a copy that had the same jobs as the boys. Number 9, Serial Killer the Board Game. Death is a common subject in gaming, it is after all the ultimate loss condition we all must face. Spoilers. And board games deal their fair share from the constant spectre of starvation and disease in survival games like This War of Mine or Dead of Winter, or the Jack the Ripper em up killer on the loose games like Letters from Whitechapel or Last Friday. But few games have reveled in death quite as much as Serial Killer the board game, which had a brief sales run in the early 90s and saw players compete to go on the biggest spree and featured such grim presentation as the board and cards coming not in a box but in a body bag, the rulebook having an actual rendering of a corpse's face on the front, cards that blame the victims for being alone at night and even coming with a bag of… are they… babies? They're they're babies, I think. Ooh, edgy stuff, game. You won't clean your room when your mum tells you to. The game drew outrage in the media, which was almost certainly the point, which is bleak enough in itself, but eventually led to it being banned in Canada before fading from sight back into the shadows. Number 8, Heart and de Grenza. And now a shining example of how the setting of a game can make all the difference. Heart and de Grenza, which translated from German as a play on close to the limit or close to the border, is a game all about smuggling items through American customs in little tin suitcases, often by bright bribing a sheriff to let you through. While the wide release of the game drew little controversy, the game was actually banned in the designer's home country of Brazil on the grounds that it encouraged players to disrespect the authorities. And as we all know, the Brazilian government strongly rejects bribery and corruption in all forms. They're famous for it. It's on their Wikipedia page. If the mechanics of the game sound familiar to diehard No Rolls Bard fans, it's because the game was reskinned a few times, eventually becoming Sheriff of Nottingham, a fantastic smuggling game which we featured on our top 10 negotiation games list. See, it's all connected and proves any game can be made palatable if you just make it historical, right? Number 7, The Sinking of the Titanic Game. Nope. Here's a front cover of The Sinking of the Titanic Game, which, as I found out while I was researching this list, made people very cross. Less because of, you know, the whole cashing in on lots of people dying, but the fact that the box depicts the angle of the ship like this, which makes it way too early in the timeline of the disaster for the HMS Carpathia to have arrived. Read a f***ing book. It seems like an interesting enough idea for a game. You roll dice and move through the Titanic, which tilts further and further on this rotating section of the board with every one or six roll. You rescue passengers, get food and drink, and get off the ship all before it eventually sinks, with the rescue ship showing up on the other side of the rotating section. It's got some stuff going on. Unfortunately, that stuff also just lots of people died and the game received enough backlash to be pulled by the publisher before it was eventually re-released as Abandoned Ship. Colon, any similarities to a real life ship are completely imaginary, honest, please stop being cross. Number six, Killer Slash Assassin. If you've ever been to a university in an area that isn't actually 
plagued by violent crime, you might have heard of Assassin, a sort of LARP roleplay style game where students are part of an assassin's society, are assigned another student as a target, then they have to stalk them and air quote, execute them with a squirt gun or a banana or something. Whimsical lols for nerds, but the game actually has official rules, once officially released as Killer by Steve Jackson Games, the people who made Munchkin. However, the game has seen a number of American universities, especially in the wake of actual campus shootings, ban the game. Universities in Nebraska, Texas, New Orleans have all forbidden students from playing the game, in some cases bringing disciplinary actions against people who apparently took the game too far by, checks notes, leaving fake bombs around. Don't do that! For f sake. Number five, reality. Fun fact, the game reality also came with a tagline, the most dangerous game in Sweden, which I don't know, just feels like a low bar, doesn't it? The purpose of the game was to move around the board and do stuff with the eventual aim of raising enough money to move to India, not abroad, specifically India. I mean, all right. The way you made money was up to you. You could be a good person and act legally, or you could deal drugs, rob, kill the other players. Difficult to tell what all of these symbols mean from a rare photo of the board, but this does appear to be the crucifixion though. Hi Jesus. So it's all near the knuckle stuff, but the game really courted outrage owing to the fact that players could actually do drugs to gain certain benefits in the game, like taking speed and then getting to roll two dice instead of one. A campaign began to have the game removed from circulation, which eventually worked, and now the mad game is lost in the past. Number four. Bombshell! Ah, something for us Brits to be proud of now, Rule Britannia, and a game made by what were once the biggest game publishers in the land, Waddington's, the company that brought you Monopoly, Cluedo, Sabutio, the lads. Bombshell was an eye-catching toy game with the table presence and push-your-luck elements of a don't-wake-dad or pop-up pirate, except if you did the wrong thing, everybody died because the game was about not tiptoeing around a dozy daddy or probing privateers with pointy pins, but defusing an unexploded bomb. On your turn, you turn the top of the bomb with your soldier, and if it explodes, you gain an injury, too many injuries, and you're out of life, I guess. It seems fairly harmless fun, but in a bit of terrible timing, a few weeks after the game's release, a real-life bomb disposal officer was killed trying to defuse an unexploded IRA bomb, and during the ensuing media outrage, Waddington's pulled the game from retail permanently. Number three, Gay Monopoly, Getopoly, and Q. So many monopolies. Pretty easy way to make a buck in board gaming. Stick the word opoly onto something and wait for the cash from confused grandparents to trickle in. Step right up, three different parodies which all saw the same fate. Gay Monopoly was a game created by Fire Island Games and look it's got Tom of Finland artwork on it. That's awesome. The game was a straight up made with love parody from air quotes the Parker sisters and yeah Parker brothers sure put pay to that. Hitting it with a storm of legal action. Getopoly was also sued by Hasbro, who now owns Monopoly, but not before the game was blackballed from retailers like Urban Outfitters for, well, I mean, for this, for all of this, people were cross ab about this. And finally, a Polish game called Kaleczka, which translates as Q, which saw players desperately try and struggle to acquire basic human necessities under the old Soviet regime. It was branded by the Polish press as Communist Monopoly, and unsurprisingly banned for sale by the Russian government, who just have the best sense of humour, don't they? Look at them. Happy as clams. Number two, Public Assistance. Another economic parody board game, this time a right-wing tinged mockery of the American welfare system. The tagline was, why bother working for a living? That'll show them game. In the game, you move around various tracks, switching between a track where you have a job, which is just a nightmare of rent, car payments, and other burdens that plague good old hard-working Joes, or you can go on the welfare track where every space is full of things like having an illegitimate child, doing some armed robbery, prostitution, snatching purses, dealing drugs. It's a punch-down joke of a game brought to you by Hammerhead Enterprises, the same company that made Capital Punishment, another game that sought to spin cash by pointing at misery and winking. After a sustained letter-writing campaign by what was then known as the American Public Welfare Association, public assistance was eventually banned from retail. And number one, Juden Rouse. Oh, okay. I mean, if you didn't know about this game, I am sorry for bringing it to your attention, but it's one of the most infamous and heartless cash-ins on human suffering, not just in board gaming, but in most mediums. The title of the game, published in 1936, translated to Jews Out, and tasked players with collecting Jewish people and taking them to collection points, expelling them from their city. What makes it arguably worse was this wasn't propaganda from the then Nazi government, but made by a private company to profit from the anti-Semitism of 
the time. The SS actually condemned this game for trivializing their movement. The game was too offensive for the Nazis. So yeah, that's, that's something that humans have made for children. It's long since been banned, obviously, but copies have been kept by numerous historical societies as it's come to represent what the International Board Game Studies Association call a terrifying example of the banality of evil. Sorry for ending the list with, with this. I kind of want to end with something a little light-hearted, so, uh, look at this corgi's butt. Oh, I'm s oh. And that's our list. Have you encountered any of these games in the wild? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to No Rolls Bard for more board game content that's generally a bit more lighthearted. Get on board.